Hey guys, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video I want to help you watch the ball perfectly in tennis. Now it's the most commonly used phrase for coaches around the entire world. Watch the ball, watch the ball, see the ball, watch the ball. You've probably been told it countless times. You've probably told your partners in doubles or your friends that you train with the same thing. But what does it actually mean to truly watch the ball? Let's get into it in this video. Now when we say watch the ball, it's not just at contact. It's very important to watch the ball when you're actually making contact with the ball, but it's also important to see the ball coming off your opponent's strings. It's also important to see the ball traveling towards you, and it's also very important to see the bounce on your side of the court. All of these steps will help you to hit the best possible shot in any situation. Now if I only watch the ball at contact, and I haven't really tracked it off my opponent's strings, and I haven't really been watching it on the bounds, a lot of times I won't be in the right position to actually hit a clean shot. And a lot of players, they watch the ball at contact, but they haven't tracked it properly off the opponent's strings, so they're in the wrong position, they're either too close to the ball, so they end up jammed, or they're too far away from the ball, and you say to them, did you really watch the ball there? And they said, yes, I saw the ball at contact, but I was still squashed, so it didn't really help me. But the truth is, it didn't help you because you weren't in the right position, because you weren't watching the ball coming off your opponent's strings. It's very, very important to see the time of contact on your opponent's strings, and that first, those first milliseconds, those first split seconds where the ball is traveling towards you, that is the time when your body is picking up where the ball is going, and it's sending signals to your body to move to the right position on the court. Now if I don't see that, if I don't see that contact point, I'll be late and I won't have the same options that I'll have if I'm there on time. So it's very important to see the ball being hit by your opponent or by a training partner or a coach when they actually make contact. So a good thing to do is to have three steps in your head. Step number one is seeing the ball hitting your opponent's strings. So that would be number one in my head. So I'm seeing the ball and I'm thinking in my head, that's one. Number two is the bounce on your side. Now it's very important to see the bounce because sometimes, especially on a clay court, you'll get very bad bounces. On a grass court, the ball might skid through a little bit faster than you expected. So you have to be prepared for all of these different situations that's gonna happen when you are waiting for the ball. Now a lot of players, they set up really nicely for a stroke, yet they don't hit a good shot because the ball suddenly uh, takes a turn or it moves slightly after the bounce. Now something that was taught to me when I was training in Spain was about the setup, especially on a clay court. A lot of players, they'll set up perfectly for a, sh for a shot. The ball will bounce in an awkward way and they'll be completely out of position to hit a good shot. So what they teach in Spain is to actually set up with your racket but have the feet continuously moving in case of bad bounces. This is also true if you're playing in the wind. You don't want to be set up too early in the wind, waiting for a shot like this, and then the wind blows it at the last second and you have to be reaching for the ball. So in the wind is another time for you to be constantly moving until just before you're ready to actually hit the ball. So you'll be moving here, the ball's bounced, now the ball's coming up to my racket, then I can really set and hit that shot. So once again, we have the first step, seeing the ball coming off your opponent's strings, which will allow you to read where the ball is going and also to prepare your body to get behind the ball and to get in the right position. The next step is then seeing the bounce on your side in case there is a bad bounce. Then you're watching the ball bounce on your side and travel up. Now this traveling from the bounce up to your racket is very important that you're tracking the ball in that phase because of the bad bounces, the wind blowing the ball at the last second, and so on. So you want to be really tracking the ball really well after that bounce until you actually hit the ball. And now let's talk about the actual contact point and how we watch the ball on that contact point. So the contact point for most strokes 
especially if you hit them quite hard, will happen within milliseconds. There'll be almost no time for you to actually truly see the ball on the string bed. It's almost physically impossible for the eyes to actually see the ball hitting your strings, coming off it. Now I know for myself, I haven't seen this happen in real time. I've seen it happen in slow motion videos. What I do see though, and what you can try to do, is actually see the ball rising to your strings and coming off. If you don't actually see the contact point, the actual time of contact, if you don't actually see it, if it happens too quick, that's fine. And that's expected because it's just actually almost humanly impossible to see that quick uh, speed that it's happening at. What you can see though, is the, the path from the bounce up to your strings the ball coming to your racket and then the ball coming off your racket. This is what you really want to focus on. Don't focus so much on actually seeing the ball hit your strings and then come off. Focus on seeing the ball travel up to your strings and travel off your racket. This will help you to hit the cleanest possible shot that you can hit. Now if I move my head in those crucial milliseconds prior to the contact point, which is very common for a lot of players around the world, they've set up perfectly they're ready to hit the shot and at the very last second they look away or they look forward to where they're actually trying to hit the ball this causes them to hit the ball slightly off center or around the frame now if you see that traveling up to the ball you see that traveling off the strings this will allow you to hit the cleanest possible shot that you can hit and it will give you the best possible chance of hitting a very nice shot so again what we're focusing on is not the actual contact point. Contact point happens so quick, it's almost impossible to see it. What we're focusing on is the ball traveling up to the strings and traveling off the strings. That's the part that you really want to zone in on. Now Federer, you could always notice that his head stays very stable when he makes contact. On forehand and on the backhand. And you always see that his head is behind the shot. And I've never seen, I still can't find an image of Federer actually with his eyes looking away or his head looking off the ball when he's actually making contact. I've always seen images of Federer with his head like this and his head like this on the backhand. Even on the slice, you'll see images of Federer like this, looking at the, the contact point, looking at where the ball's actually meeting the strings. Now, once again, even if he doesn't see that actual time of impact, what he's looking at is to have the best possible chance from the bounce up to the strings and then the ball coming off. And that's what's so crucial. Same on the volleys. If I'm hitting a volley, I don't want to be looking at my opponent or where I want to aim. I want to be seeing that ball coming up to my strings and then coming off my racket. So if I don't see those crucial seconds, those crucial milliseconds right before contact and right after, I know I haven't watched the ball in the best way that I possibly can. So once again, the part that I'm focusing on is not the actual striking of the ball. That's gonna happen so quickly, I'm almost, if I'm hitting the ball quite soft, so if I hit the ball like this, I can actually see the ball blurring onto my strings. But if I hit the ball quite hard like this, that time of contact happens so quick, it's almost impossible for me to see the ball hitting my strings. But what I do see is that rising up, then the ball coming off. And that's what's so important, and this is what you need to go and work on if you really want to hit the ball clean time and time again. So let's go over those steps once again. Step number one, you're seeing your opponent making contact, which will allow you to get into the best possible position to hit the best possible shot. Step number two, you're tracking the ball as it travels over the net. Now, when it's traveling over the net, you'll be able to read 
the spin, the pace, and also the height of the ball. So you'll be able to predict, will the ball be bouncing higher? Will it be coming through quite fast? Is it a flat ball? Is it a top spin shot? Or is it a slice? Now when I say that we're watching the ball traveling over the net and we're reading the, the flight of the ball, the spin, the pace, the height, I don't mean that we're actually consciously thinking about that shot after shot. If I was to consciously think about that shot after shot, I'd be exhausted after a few shots because it's so intense and the focus that you need to do that in such a short amount of time is extremely hard. Now it's possible, but it's very tiring and it's something that is unnecessary because it happens at an unconscious level. We're actually, this is something that's happening deep in our brain, deep in our tennis brain. We've hit so many balls that our body knows that type of ball flies like this, that's gonna probably happen after the bounce or it's coming down quite low, I see that it's under spinning, that's probably gonna skid through on the bounce. So by tracking the ball, coming off our opponent's strings and traveling towards our side of the court, we're giving our brain and our body the best possible chance to read how that ball is actually gonna bounce and how it's gonna move after the bounce. The next step is then watching the ball, hitting the ground and traveling up towards your contact zone. By doing this, you're gonna be in the best possible position to adjust if there's a bad bounce or if the wind blows it suddenly just before you make contact. And the last step is obviously hitting the ball, but seeing the ball coming right up to your string bed and then seeing the ball coming off your string bed. The actual contact point happens so quick that it's almost impossible to see it, but you're trying your best to see it and you're trying your best to watch the ball coming up to your racket and coming off your racket. So there you have it guys, these are the simple steps to truly watching the ball. Now you know that watching the ball doesn't mean just watching the ball for half a second or a split second just before you hit it, it's actually tracking the ball coming off your opponent's strings, traveling towards you, watching the ball bounce on your side of the court, watching the ball rise up to your racket and watching the ball coming off your racket. If you can do that well, I guarantee you'll hit a lot more balls in the center of the strings and you'll be in the right position much more often than now. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below as well. Which part of your tennis game do you struggle with the most and what would you like to see me and Alex doing in the next few videos? If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so you get our newest videos when they're released and all the best. See you guys soon.